These parents from Beaumont, Texas came together to make a real difference in the world. They are the parents of 23 daughters, all members of the Westbrook High School girls soccer team. On March 29, 2006, the bus carrying the team to a soccer game overturned. Two of the girls, Alicia and Ashley, were killed. The others were injured, many seriously. The bus they rode in, like most buses in America, had no seat belts. Because of these parents and the tragedy that brought them together, the school district now owns 30 school buses equipped with lap and shoulder belts. And just one year after the accident, the girls soccer team traveled to all their games on buses equipped with seat belts. And because of these parents, on June 8, 2007, the state of Texas joined California in passing a law mandating three-point lap and shoulder belts on all school buses beginning in 2010. Every day we put our children, over 23 million of them, on school buses without restraints. Now, like the parents in Beaumont, you can change that in your school district. Across the country, progressive school districts have voluntarily installed lap and shoulder belts on newly purchased school buses. Today's parents expect their children to be belted every time they ride in a vehicle. This priority on belted seating is what has driven school districts to implement lap and shoulder belts in advance of state legislation. Momentum is building and it's time to take action. This video presents the case for equipping school buses with lap and shoulder belts. We'll explain the importance of seat belts for crash protection, reinforcing a lifelong habit for our children, improving behavior on the school bus, and increasing school bus ridership. Crash protection. Currently, crash protection on school buses relies on compartmentalization closely spaced energy absorbing high back padded seats. Testing as well as the experience of real world accidents have demonstrated that for anything more than a direct frontal or rear impact crash, compartmentalization offers limited protection and virtually no protection in a rollover crash. Imagine what a difference lap and shoulder belts might have made in this Ohio rollover crash. Much of the nation saw this horrifying and all-too-graphic video on the CBS Morning News and the NBC Today Show. Research by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA, indicates that lap and shoulder belts reduce injuries and fatalities by about 45 percent in all types of crashes and up to 70 percent in rollover crashes. NHTSA currently requires lap belts in certain types of small school buses and recently stated that the optimum protection for children in large buses would be provided by lap and shoulder belts combined with compartmentalization. School buses are traveling longer distances these days as children go to sporting events and other activities outside their communities on increasingly crowded roads. News stories of school bus accidents are becoming more and more frequent, pushing the urgency for belted seating in the minds of parents. Reinforcing a lifelong habit. For most children, their first ride on the school bus is the first time they ever ride unrestrained in a motor vehicle. In other words, the only place a child is taught to not wear a seat belt is in school transportation. This sends a contradictory message to our children that seat belts can be unnecessary inside a moving vehicle. So when our children get on the bus and don't buckle up, the habit of seat belt use is not reinforced and we miss a prime training opportunity. However, when schools take the step to equip buses with seat belts, those school buses become an important extension of the classroom for training children to build this critical lifelong habit. According to NHTSA, young drivers ages 15 to 20 years old are especially vulnerable to death and injury on our roadways. Traffic crashes are the leading cause of death for teenagers in America and teens are involved in three times as many fatal crashes as all other drivers. In 2006 alone, about 3,000 U.S. teens died in auto accidents while driving unbelted. Since we know that lap and shoulder belts reduce injuries and fatalities by at least 45 percent, it follows that about 1,500 of those teens may be alive today had they buckled up while driving. This is the entire high school population of many school districts. Children expect to be, wear seat belts in every vehicle, and the use of a seat belt on a school bus will help 
not only prevent distractions to the driver, but reinforce the behavior of using a seatbelt for every ride, including the family car. When you consider these statistics, the importance of building that lifelong seatbelt habit becomes very clear. Improved behavior. Time and time again, feedback from bus drivers proves the use of lap and shoulder belts dramatically improves the behavior of children. There is no greater deterrent to unruly behavior than keeping a child properly seated. A bus driver who spends less time dealing with unruly behavior has more time to focus on driving safely. I don't have to worry about them jumping up, moving from seat to seat. I don't have them turned around in the aisle, blocking the aisle. Once they get on the bus, they sit in there, they face fall, and they buckle up. So I say that the discipline on the bus have really, really improved with the, with the seat belts. Increasing school bus ridership. Parents have a strong preference for keeping their children restrained in lap and shoulder belts in all moving vehicles. In fact, some actually opt out of sending their children on the school bus and instead transport them using their personal vehicles. This is a detriment to the environment, increases traffic in the community, and could actually increase the risks to children as they travel to and from school. Encouraging the use of school bus transportation benefits the entire community. Although school buses are recognized as being safe, the addition of lap and shoulder belts can make them safer. A poll of parents commissioned by the American School Bus Council in December 2006 shows that parents overwhelmingly favor a national standard for lap and shoulder belts in large school buses. More than half have a concern about school bus safety, with a lack of seat belts as the single biggest concern. Second in the minds of parents is a concern about discipline problems, an issue that is proven to be strongly impacted by the addition of seat belts to the bus. The capacity issue. With all the improvements in lap and shoulder belt technology, what has been holding us back? In the past, opponents have argued that adding belts to buses reduces seating capacity for children. When the capacity of the school bus fleet is reduced, districts either have to buy more buses to transport the same number of children, or they have to reduce routes, meaning fewer kids have bus service. While earlier versions of the lap and shoulder belted seats did reduce capacity, times and technology have changed. Products such as the Safeguard Flex Seat enable buses to retain the same capacity as unbelted buses. This means that a bus equipped with belted seats can transport the same number of children as a bus without seat belts. And the addition of seat belts no longer means buying extra buses or increasing costs such as fuel, maintenance, insurance, personnel, and parking. This removes the significant financial obstacle that has held back lap and shoulder belts on buses in the past. The path is clear to take action. While legislation is pending in several states, there is no reason to wait for new laws. The most progressive school districts in the U.S. have taken the steps to equip newly purchased school buses with lap and shoulder belts. A child's safety is worth the cost. If you are concerned about this issue, you are in a position to directly impact the safety and well-being of children in your district by moving to equip school buses now. For information and tools to help with your local advocacy efforts for lap and shoulder belts on school buses, visit SafeGuard4Kids.com and SafeBusesForKids.org.